Hey guys, this is Naitik Nilesha and me and my teammate uh, Ashutosh Kumar Shah. We are here to present our MLOps project which is Chest X-ray Medical Diagnosis with Deep Learning. Uh, this video is sort of presentation on our, of our project and even a tutorial of our project. So let's start and these are the, uh, as you can see, these are the uh, libraries we will be importing uh, for our uh, for creating our model so uh, as you can see the cells are successfully ran perfect and then uh, these we are loading the data set in this cell okay so this is the head this is these are the first five rows of the uh, x-ray labels so in this one means that that person has the disease and zero means that that person doesn't have a disease okay and you may pause this video over here uh, to just uh, see that uh, how many diagnoses we our model can detect uh, our model can detect 14 different diagnoses and which include nodule pneumonia fibrosis edema although mostly these are the disease that can be detected using the lungs x-ray and what does uh, leakage mean so what does this function do okay so this function uh, so for example uh, just an example consider you had pneumonia uh, sometime back okay and you just went to the hospital to take the to take a chest x-ray and doctors say that you had pneumonia and then you need to take medication so you take the medication and then you just again go uh, a week afterwards to the to the same hospital for getting an x-ray done so that you just know that uh, is your pneumonia recovering or not okay so if the pneumonia is not recovering and uh, so the hospital has two x-ray images of yours and this is listed it as these are the images of pneumonia okay and uh, by chance one x-ray is gone into a train train data set and one x-ray is gone into test data set so what will it do is this is a huge problem so when in accuracy testing you will get super optimistic accuracy results so which will be so your data set will perform much lesser in the real life because the data set where the or model was trained on uh, one x-ray and then the in the test the similar x-ray was shown that just show us that this this guy has pneumonia or not so it will just accurately say that this guy has pneumonia so the accuracy will be over the roof but in real data set it won't perform that well and in medication you just need perfect models you just can't have uh, less accurate models okay and uh, it's a, always a good practice to test your uh, model or else to test your function in this case as you can see I just gave two uh, in this way the first data set type the test case one I gave two data sets okay and over here the patient ID 2 is same and in the second test case there are no same patient IDs okay so if your function is correct then there should be no uh, so the result should be true in the first test case because there is leak leakage output and in the second test case it should be false so the expected output I have also listed that uh, it is true because the patient ID is same over here and over here and in test case 2 there are no same patient IDs so it's false and then uh, in so just test it in your data set so the both of them should be false leakage between train and test false leakage between valid and test false so you know that there is no data leakage so you are sure and so uh, and uh, so in this cell uh, I'll be giving the thousand images directory where they are stored so these are just thousand images uh, the whole data set is above 40 GB plus and it has one like 10,000 images but when we train on these thousand images it took us around one hour to train our machine is GPU equipped so it took one hour so just imagine having to test one like 10,000 images 
so it will be super heavy on the GPU I mean on the machine and it will be very time consuming all right so let's just see an example okay so this is the example of a, uh, of an image of the data set it's a 2d image so as you can see and then let's see uh, the number of examples of each class all right so this data set has a problem so we just randomly took out thousand images we just didn't uh, made sure that uh, five images each and every five uh, there each class has five images basically all right so in this the hernia has the least number of examples so their model will be less accurate during hernia uh, so how can you solve that so this this is called as class imbalance this problem is called as class imbalance so the next few cells will be solving the class imbalance and as you can, as I had said earlier, test your functions. Because if your test is correct, you just know that this function is correct. So if there is some error in the below cells, so you just know that these functions are correct. So you don't need to check these functions. You just need to check other functions. Uh, you, you should get the basic idea from this. Alright. Yep. I have even given the expected outputs so it is easier for you to test whether your function is correct or not so as you can see the output is same alright ok so all right. So this is the basic graph of our data set So these cells are just pretty self-explanatory. If you have some knowledge in deep learning, machine learning, then you should just get the basic idea about these. All right. So as you can see, the above couple of cells just made sure that uh, the positive and negative values are equal. As you can see in hernia, in every, each and every each and every uh, data set a class okay so let's just get the weighted loss function done and again we will be testing it okay it ran perfectly so i have already given the densenet one to one model uh, indicator blink which you will find uh, in description Okay, so as as the name suggests, there are 121 layers in the DenseNet one to one model, and we will be adding two more layers on top of it, which is a global average pooling 2D layer and a dense layer with sigmoid activation. So the this brings the total number of layers at 123 layers. All right. Okay. So let's. This will take. A few uh, seconds or minutes depending upon your machine so I will just okay so it's just hand okay. no need to time lapse all right so a huge disclaimer the data set I'll be providing will be 40 GB plus I just randomly took out thousand photos but now there will be 40 GB plus data uh, data set sex which has 1 lakh 10,000 images okay so if you have pretty nice machine pretty nice machine or else if you just want to keep your machine on for few days or hours depending upon your machine uh, you might uncomment this and run so if you want to have less dead less number of images to train on or more number of images to train on go on okay you may do uh, but we have already trained our data set uh, we have already trained on our data set 1000 images data set and already given a pre-trained model which has, pre which has weights uh, in the folder which will be indicated of course alright guys so it ran it took around 5 minutes uh, on my GPU equipped mach uh, machine you will be wondering that what does this AUROC curve mean and 
what does this do uh, so in this we will be using a we will be uh, using a metric called as AUC area under the curve from the ROC receiver operating characteristic curve this is also re referred to as AU ROC value but uh, how to interpret it so the plot is that uh, is there the curve to the uh, which is the more more to the left and has the more area under it it is performing better which means that the machine learning machine is performing better the model is performing better you can scroll down even see the values over here all right so uh, keep in mind this is a only a thousand image data set we have one like ten thousand images in our hand ready so in machine learning the more data is better because there are more variations all right so in uh, showing that how the model works uh, we will be visualizing using grad cam so in this we will be taking out four of the top aoc and then just random any image i'll be running it in front of you so that you just know that this is not any fake image and just the model is detecting accurately so it will take some time so this thing is loading original image then it is generating grad cam for cardiomegaly then it will generate for mass and then it will generate pneumonia thorax pneumothorax then edema so as you can see it is taking few seconds or on a minute to run all right so uh, you can see this is the original image and most probably if you know a little bit about lungs you may say that there is no problem in here and even the model is saying that there is no problem in here cardiomegaly 0.004 percent so i mean 0.004 probability so uh, which shows that this guy has no cardiomegaly no mass no pneumothorax no edema you can see they are all well below 0, 0.0 so which is almost zero and all right so let's see an other image right once again it will load the original then cardiomegaly then mass then pneumothorax then edema and we will run this and run this so that it just loads all right so the other image has loaded original image all right so as you can see there are a lot of white parts in here and then what is this as you can see our eyes can probably just tell they both are different this is a perfectly fine person's lung this is a, this has some diseases and so there's no cardiomegaly you can see 0 0.005 priority so that's zero mass all right so this guy's priority of 0 0.79 and as you can see we did it that there is some white abnormal part and even the model is saying that there is something wrong in here as you can see there is red part so there is something really bad wrong over here and then something is going wrong wrong over here all right and in pneumothorax this guy has pneumothorax like 95 priority 0 0.95 this guy has and priority maximum priority is one least probability is zero there is no minus there is no above one like two three no and so you can see pneumothorax so the monitor there is pneumothorax over here as you can see this there is some white part there is no white part over here but there is some white part over here so this guy is lungs are in really bad condition you can see that all right one more thing in the 40 gb plus data set uh there is data augmented i mean it is data augmented and uh there are no rotations there are no flips but uh just some zoom in zoom out because if you flip the image then the heart will go towards the left side you can see the, if you flip this image the heart will go to the left side so it is a disease uh, in medical terms I don't know that name but it is a disease 
so that's not what we want and so we have just tilted just a slight bit of rotated like two to three degrees and zoom out a little bit or zoom in a little bit so that the model we are basically fooling the model that you are training on a huge data set but we are just training on small real data set All right and once again the example edema this guy has no edema as you can see 0 0.099 so which is almost zero ish like that's 0 0.1 almost and in here you can just basically tell I was just explained in the earlier part you can see this guy has really bad not really bad this guy has around three diseases and this guy has around one disease like proper one disease mass and edema is there a little bit of edema so it's sort of starting stage so he can just take medication look this is the advantage of our model you are not detecting only one disease like you are just not going visiting hospital for pneumonia uh, the doctor will when the doctor will look at the x-ray he will just uh, say that you have a little bit of this disease so you just take medication it will cure pretty easily so this model works like a doctor it will detect it there it will just not only detect only one disease it will detect a lot of disease 14 different diseases to be accurate you can even train this data set for train this model for COVID-19 like just dump in the COVID-19 data set add one more label uh, just edit the CSV file train the model and you are done your data set will even uh, detect COVID-19 and detecting COVID-19 using X-ray it's a really powerful method but the problem being that uh, I was not able to get the data set uh, for COVID-19 this data set was readily available from NIH let's just see so this data set was readily available uh, in NIH alright so that's all guys uh, this is my first time making a tutorial video and all thanks to Vimal sir I couldn't even imagine in in March April that I would be making a model that will detect 14 different diseases just by looking at an x-ray just like a doctor but here I am making models machine learning and all that so this lockdown has benefited me a lot so thank you Imal sir all right guys my and any suggestions please do do comment down thank you bye